Ooh. Hallelujah. Little woman. I love it. Oh, Lord. She's on the welcoming committee. Oh, okay, we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, let me pray and we'll proceed. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for meeting us in this place. We thank you for calling a meeting, oh great God. But when you call a meeting, there is something that you have to do. We thank you for the word that will be spoken tonight, God. We thank you for the hearts that will be changed and transformed, not by power, not by might, but only by your spirit. Father, we ask that you have your way in this place. Touch every heart, every mind. Meet every person where they are. May they receive a word that transforms, that heals, that confirms, that convicts, and that delivers. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen.
Well, I, I'm not going to kick you out, but I am asking you to continue to apply for jobs, do things that's going to better you. That's fine that you can play an instrument and you can play it well, but what matters the most is that, is that you are a man now. You're no longer attached to me. I mean, yeah, come on, listen. And I've given you everything that I could possibly give you, and I'm just I'm praying to the Lord, Lord, give me what I need to do to turn things around for you so that you can understand I'm not going to be here always. But the Lord is. But you have to keep working towards being the man that he has blessed you to be. Do you understand that, son? Uh, yeah. All right, I'm going to um, take my two minutes tomorrow morning. All right, Mom, let me know you're done. I love, you. I love you too, son, but I need you to think on that. I really, really do. It's very important. And your food will be in here. You're not going to make it for me? I'm not going to make the food anymore. I mean, come and fix your plate. I do have something over here, but no. You need to start to do things for yourself. I cannot continue you to do things. That I understand that. Things must change so that I can see you growing. So when the good Lord takes me away one day, I won't have to worry about you. I'm life insurance, Mom. Love Sir. you, Lord. Love you, Mom. But I need your help because I believe some of it I've done myself. But I need your help because he's not going to move just because I'm saying it. But I need your help. And God just said, you'll always be with me. So Father, have your way in this life. Turn him around. Hallelujah, and I know you will. And make it all work out for his good. In your name. message tonight is called Stunted Growth. Stunted Growth. Lord, we thank you for this word on tonight. Yes. May it touch our hearts. Yes, May it open up our ears. May we see ourselves, search ourselves, and search you even more. That your will may be done in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You see, we all have been born into sin. And shaping and iniquity. We all were born with some things already going on in us. That's why you'll hear people say, I was born like that. Some of it is true. Not necessarily that God created you like that, but it was on your bloodline, those generational curses, and we all must be born again. 
Sin is a part of the human condition. It's very natural to us. We learn how to say no before we say yes as babies. No, no, no. But somehow we only count it as sin when it's in its extreme forms. We miss the subtleties. The Bible says one plants and one waters, but it's God who gives the increase. The devil always mimics the things that God does. He plants things also. He waters things also. Let's just say you were born in a home with a verbally abusive parent. So you heard you're stupid. You're dumb. You're ugly. You're fat. You'll never be anything. Then you go to school. You hear you're dumb, you're ugly, you're fat, nobody wants you. My God. You start to believe it because you heard it over, over, over again. You begin to take on that life of the words that people have called you. That's why we must be mindful, even the nicknames that we call our children. Fat, fat, so on and so forth. Be mindful because you're speaking over their life. In life, we all grow up. You turn an older age every year. But it takes a process to actually mature. Not everyone matures, but we all grow up. It's dangerous not to mature, but to grow. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 13. also taking on this false mindset that we don't want to get older. Everybody is chasing their youth. We, we, we're trying to figure out how to look younger, how to be younger, how to talk younger, how to dress younger. 50 years old, shopping in the teeny bopper section. Oh my God. No condemnation, just help. We gotta see it correctly. Grandpa and grandson should not have on the same wardrobe. Something is off in our thinking. And it's not all of our fault. Life is something that we experience, and we grow through. Sometimes we have people that come alongside and teach us and walk us through and help us to mature. And some of us have just had to figure it out the best way we knew how. So it's no condemnation. 1 Corinthians 13. Verse 11. When I was a child, I spoke and I thought and I reasoned as a child. But when I grew up, I put away childish things. All right. When I was a child, I responded. My answers. Yes. were childlike. Mm -hmm. I processed. I fought like a child. I desired things that children 
desire. I was pleased with things that children are pleased with. I focused like a child. But when I became older, I put away childish things. Some of us have not put away childish things. It's an identity crisis. We have a dog, I hear about my dog all the time. And um, we bought him this little toy and we was just wiggling it in front of his little face. And he was like, I don't know why y'all giving me this toy. He just, he looked at it and he put it in his mouth one time, just like if I, maybe if I put it in my mouth, they'll leave me alone. And then he put it down to the side and he went on about his way. Well, we had another dog in our house the other day and it was a puppy. And the little puppy just played with the toy, just tore it all apart. Woo! And it just shows our mindsets. Because our older dog, he was like, but the puppy that was visiting had a good time. When I was a child, I thought as a child, I desired as a child, I was entertained with childlike things. Children are immature. They don't think ahead or plan. As a grown-up, you have to plan. You can't just show up every time because you're gonna miss something. You have to plan your time, plan your schedule, plan for the things that might come up. Some people keep a, a first aid kit in their car, that's planning. Some people keep jumper cables in their car, an emergency roadside kit in their car. That's planning. When a woman takes a diaper bag with her because she has a child, that's planning. The content of a woman's purse, that's planning. We have to plan ahead. When you set money to the side, because maybe your one check won't pay the rent, so you gotta set one check to the side and then catch up the other half on your next check. That's planning. Children blame each other. He did it. She did it. They did it. They accept no accountability. Woo, Jesus. And they don't share. They're selfish. It's all about them. Now, even though we're talking about children, I'm sure we can see ourselves just a little bit in there. Children don't know how to process fear. Woo, that's a big one. They don't know how to process fear. It can overtake them, overshadow them. Fear, false evidence, appearing real. But when we're older, we're able to say, Ooh, that definitely made me uncomfortable. But I can see the bigger picture. As a grown person, to let fear stop you is very childlike. I heard um, someone say the other day, it was a sermon I was listening to about relationships. And the man said on there, he said, uh, he said, people are so scared to get in relationships the right, the right way, just get out of the end. They're so scared. Why are you scared? Because, oh, I'm scared I'm going to get hurt. I just, they said the worst thing that's going to happen is the Lord's going to heal you. Why are you afraid to be hurt when you serve the healer? It's like, wow, that's actually very good. <laughs> it's very true because fear keeps us from destiny. It takes faith to confront fear to reach destiny. There's always going to be fear standing right in the front yes. of your promise. Right. And if you never learn to deal with fear as a child, mm. you'll forfeit the blessing. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Jesus! Yeah. Yeah, Quit the job. Who but I'm scared I'm going to pay the rent next month. You ain't never slept outside before. Come on. The same God. Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. Is still watching over you. Yes. My God. Yes. Marry the woman. 
I don't know if she's going to treat me right. The same God that healed your heart from the last relationship that was not in the will of God healed your heart. My God. Take a leap of faith. Start the business. Well, I don't know if I'm going to, if I, I got enough money this month, but I don't know. Fear will always stop yes. you in your tracks. And the thing that I've learned is that people that are not bound by fear always scare people who are bound by fear. <laughs> Woo! Children, y'all know kids look, give you a heart attack. They, they, they don't see nothing wrong with it. They come this close to busting their head open. They get up and laugh. And you done had a whole heart attack. <laughs> yes. Woo! My God. Children have no self-control. They do whatever they want. They say whatever they want. They have no filter on their mouth. They don't process. Yes, they may think it, and they think everything they think they should say. Don't, don't answer this out loud, but how many of us are still doing that? It's childish. Because we are accountable for our words. We have to really think, is this the right thing to say? Is this the time to say? Is this the tone that I should say? My goodness. Is this something that I should pray about? Yes. Children are jealous. Woo! They are jealous. Oh, yes, they are. And they desire the spotlight. It's all about, look at me. I don't know if you've been around any little ones, but that's that. Look at me, look at this, listen to this, look at this, look, 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 look. Grown-ups do it in a different way. We don't say it, but we do things. We dress very expressive, and we color our hair very expressively, and we pierce our faces, and we, we do all these extra things yes. to get attention. Yes. Look at me! Mm -hmm. My God. Children have small hands. That represents the things they can handle. They can only handle small problems. Yes. Woo! Let a medium-sized problem hit, and they just, oh, look, just fall out. Have a whole temper tantrum. Yes. But as grown-ups, we're doing that. Mm -hmm. yes. We forget that God is in control. Yes, is. All yes. things. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. My God. Yes. My check was short. Mm -hmm. You ain't got to blow up the business, people. God is still a provider. Yes. He didn't forget that he was a provider because your check was short. Woo! Yes. Jesus. Yes. God, we bless you because you're good to us. We have to think beyond the problem yes. that we're looking at. Children have to be told things over and over and over and over yes. again. Yes. My God, we shouldn't have to be told things over and over and over. Sometimes it's because we have too much on our mind. Mm -hmm. The Bible says, forgetting those things that are behind you, pressing forward to the mark. Yes. Of the high calling. Yes. We have to press forward. We can't hold on to who we not gonna forgive from last year. And when I gotta hold on to this thought, because when I see Sister So and So, oh, I'm gonna give her a piece of my mind. And when I run across this one, I'm gonna do. And we're holding too much. That's why you can't keep your focus on what you're supposed to be doing, because you're worrying about the things that are behind you. Yes. Yes. Oh, Jesus. Yes. 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 We have to learn how to empty out of our seats. Yes, God. Thank you, Jesus. Empty out. Thank you, Lord. The Lord released me recently to go back to doing hair. And I was so excited, so I came in today with my first day in here. And I said, girl, I said, girl, I don't even got no products. I done made a whole hair. I didn't got no products. And it was my cousin. She said, girl, because when you, whenever, whatever thing God calls you to do, you just cold turkey. You cut it all off. You just. You have to learn how to do that. Cold turkey. Mm -hmm. Whatever season I'm in, I got to empty out of that one. 
transition. Sometimes it takes you a second to get your grip on it. But then once you got your grip on it, go with it. Don't keep worrying about the things that are behind you. Lot's wife. Mm -hmm. Look back. When you look back at what God told you to leave alone, you get salty. You get salty. You get salty. My God, your emotions overtake. Come on, come on. Woo, Jesus. Come on. Let it go. Leave it alone. Leave it behind you. My God. Children are easily discouraged. Woo. They can't do it one time and they just fall out. They can't tie their shoe one time and they just, they trying to draw their little letters on the page and they get it backwards one time and they just, whole oh, whole meltdown. But we're doing that too. It's grown ups. We gotta get control of our emotions. They gotta be able to be the ones having temper tantrums. We can't still be having temper tantrums. We have to grow up. At some point, we have to grow up. Children have soft skin. Woo. Yes. But as you mature, mm. the Lord allows situations to make your skin tough. Mm. Yeah. But you're not letting it work. Mm. So we stay having soft skin and everything someone says about us. Come on. We're up there. That's true. I mean, we're going to retreat. Yes. Yes. Listen, and, and it's a spot that the enemy will always use. Mm-hmm. I have learned this in my walk. The person or people who talk the craziest to you, who offend you the most, are your assignment. But the devil uses those people because if you be like, oh, honey, she don't know how to talk to me. I'm not going to say nothing else to her again. Then you dropped her purpose. You dropped his purpose that was in your belly. Wow. Jesus. Jesus. We cannot be easily offended. Ooh, when Jesus was on the, when Jesus was, um, he was healing people. They were doing healing and they were doing deliverance. And the woman came and she came for healing for her son. Yes. And, the, and the Lord said, oh, I didn't come to heal y'all. Mm-hmm. And she said, wait a minute. Even the dogs yeah, yeah. eat the crumbs from the master's table. Yeah, yeah. Now, wait a minute. He said, I ain't never seen faith like that. One day we're going to teach on that lesson because I learned something so valuable. But just as a snippet of it, the thing that I learned is that if she was easily offended, she would have missed her blessing. Everybody is not going to know how to talk to you. That's why we got to get over ourselves. They might actually have to tell you what you need to hear. And they might, they just might not know how to talk kind, gentle. But it's true. The delivery might be all wrong. Every nip bit of it. They might even use wrong language. But it might be exactly what you need to hear. But if your skin is soft and you're easily offended, you'll miss the message. Children enjoy games. Woo, trucks, trains, video games. No, we talk about that here. Men that are wanting to play video games. It's a child mindset. Children play video games and they tricking us. Because they make it grown and they got the shooting and they got the grown ladies on there and all those things. But it's still something not quite right for a grown man to want to play a child's game. My God. Me and my husband were dissecting the topic one day, and we came to this conclusion. People that are very engulfed in video games, they're not achieving a lot in the world. They're not conquering a lot in the world around them. But on that video game, they get lost, and they keep winning boards and winning boards and winning boards. So what it does is it builds a false sense of achievement in them. My God. 
Because grown people really don't have time. When you really get in purpose, when you really begin to walk in the things of God, you're supposed to be getting up early to pray. You know how people that are pulling on you that you got to pray with and intercede with throughout the day. You got your own family. You should have a job that you're working on. And not only should you have a job, you should have something in purpose that you're working on. That's your God-given gift. You got to read the word for yourself. You got to rest. You have to do self-care. You have to bathe. You got to clean your house. You don't have time for video games. My God. That's true. Trucks, trains, video games. All right, ladies, let's talk for a moment. I know this is the men's conference, but we're going to hit this real quick. All right. Because I, I, I said a statement, and when I went home and I listened to the video, I said, I said, men, if y'all's wife, wives are not at home playing with baby dolls, you need to let the video game go. Mm-hmm. And the Lord said, but some of them are at home playing with baby dolls. And I said, well, help me understand, Lord. He said, they are their own baby doll. They spent so much time primping. They changing her like baby dolls. They spent three hours this night on they, on they, just they self. And then the next night they spent four hours on they self. And then the next night they don't spend. I'm not saying don't look nice. You're supposed to look presentable. But be mindful. It's an idol. When we're overly absorbed without an appearance. Yeah. My God. Children have short attention spans. Whew, my Lord. <laughs> they play with something for like two seconds. Jesus. You need a test? How long can you read your word? Mm. My God. Are you somebody that can, I can get a couple of verses and then my mind's gone? Or, or can you get a couple of chapters? Can you get a couple of pages? How long is your prayer life before you get distracted? Yes, yes. That's it. Woo, Jesus. Children let other people control their feelings. Johnny made me do it. You made me cuss you out. We have to get in control of our feelings. Your feelings cannot run you. Because they're going to run you in a direction you don't want to go. Children have temper tantrums. They fall out in the floor, cry, scream, and holler. I know you're thinking, no, I don't do that. When you get cut off in traffic, do you yell? My Lord. Let somebody mess with your child. Do you yell? Woo! It's still a temper tantrum, y'all. Woo! Jesus! It's childish. It's childish. When you're grown, you can process. Okay, somebody bothered little Johnny today on the bus, but Johnny is still living, okay? We're going to get a hold of ourselves. You can't go and lose your whole mind. Yes. Things happen. They have to have thick skin, too. They didn't die. You didn't die, Johnny. Go wash your face. We will address it, but I won't lose my cool. I can't get my blood pressure up. A lot of people are struggling from high blood pressure because they still having temper tantrums as a grown-up. I have seen grown people, what I call, get they self-mad. Just you ain't even going back and forth. They just having a conversation and they just get they just keep I guess they just thinking about it more than they and like, what is going on? Like I'm a little teapot. Woo! Just done got themselves stirred up. Children are irresponsible. Woo! This is a big one. Because a lot of grown people, we want the title. Oh, honey, I'm grown. But you're moving like a child. You can't complete a full task and then finish the cleanup of the task. You can't process throughout the day. You, you get easily distracted. You see some over here, who oh, Lord. You're supposed to be going this way. You see a little something and it caught your eye and then you're going that way. Yes. My God. It's a very important lesson to learn before marriage. You can't get distracted because you'll always see things that catch your eye. You can have the prettiest wife in the world. And it's still going to be somebody pretty that might catch your eye. But if you haven't learned how to stay focused, 
Yeah. Your eyes will draw you away. My God. Arrested development. It's another term for stunted growth. In 1983, it was characterized by a form of mental disorder. Severe mental impairment or lack of intelligence. Hosea 4 and 1 says, my people perish for lack of knowledge. Mm -hmm. What you don't know can't harm you. Yes. My God. But what you do know and still don't do is now sin. Mm -hmm. Let me say it again. What you don't know can harm you. But what you do know and don't do is now a sin. Amen. And it falls back on your own lap. In anthropology... The term arrested development means a plateau of development. I grew, I learned, but then I had a stopping point. And now I'm no longer going up, I'm just on the same. But because I'm still walking, I think that I'm doing a good job. I think that I'm growing because I'm still walking, I'm still showing up, but you stop learning. Yes. You stop growing upward. Yes. Amen. Arrested development. An abnormal state in which development has stopped prematurely. Yes. You aren't supposed to stop there. In your learning, let's talk for a moment about spiritually. So many people think all I got to do is give my life to the Lord and I'm done. I'm that's it. No, it's premature. You stop learning prematurely. Yes. You still have to be delivered, yes. washed, cleansed. Let that mind be in me that is in Christ yes. Jesus. Yes. There's more, and then once you get all those things, it's time to do the work of the Lord. It's not enough. You have stopped. You have arrested development spiritually if you stopped at salvation. If you stopped at only attending church and being a pew member, you have arrested development in the spirit. It's an abnormal condition. Resulting from a defected gene or a developmental deficiency. So either it was something that you taught, that you were taught, or it was something that happened in your mind or in your life or on your bloodline. Because I learned this. I was raised Baptist. And Baptists don't teach you about the prophetic, about prophets. They don't teach you about apostles. They don't teach you about dreams and visions. It's all in the Bible, but they don't teach you about it. Then I visited a seven-day Adventist church for a season of my life, and they actually don't even believe in prophets. So when I begin to get prophecies, Downloaded in my mind, I begin to see things before they happen, and then they happen, and I begin to call out things, and then they happen. I begin to dream things, and then they happen. I thought I was going crazy. Because there was no teaching. There was nothing to explain what I was going through. Right. The Bible says, in the last days, he'll pour out his spirit upon all flesh. Sons and daughters yes. shall prophesy. These children have to learn these things. Because yeah. the world is telling them that they're crazy. Mm -hmm. I have one friend, she's, she's, yeah, she's very wealthy. But she's not spiritual. She's not into the things of God. And she has a foster home. And she has this one little boy. And she said, girl, here he go telling me he's a man of God. Tell me he see angels. Tell me he see this. Tell me about that he see this. Girl, I'm about to get him on some psych meds. Mm -hmm. My God. My God. And then you get to a place where you just stop telling people because they think you're crazy. Mm -hmm. Jesus, help us. Then we have some cultures of faith that don't believe in women pastors. They don't believe that a woman should. They say, be quiet and sit at home. Mm -hmm. My God. I would, love for, I would love to have came to a church that was established by a man that was living the life, walking the talk, fully submitted to God and leading us everywhere we go. My Lord. But the Lord said, whosoever. Come on. The word of God said, if they're not against us, they're for us. My God. I love the Lord. He's a good God. In Judges, 
There was a battle once that Deborah was called to. And the word of the Lord said, this victory belongs to a woman. It's in the Bible. Then they said, it's not such thing as women pastors. Well, if you go back, Rachel, in Genesis, the Bible says she was a shepherdess. A shepherd is a pastor, an overseer. It says she was a shepherdess. We don't know our word enough. Arrested development in the spirit. Because we haven't been taught right. Because we don't have enough capacity to sit down and get in our word enough by ourselves. We want the microwave word of God. What's that? Glad you asked. What you're getting now is the mic. I already had to sit down. Get in the spirit. Listen to God. Stop what I was doing. Get my pen and write down what he was telling me. Flip those pages. Wake up out of my sleep. God, what are you saying? Help me understand. Okay, okay. That's the microwave. But to do it yourself, you got to learn how to have a home-cooked meal from the word of God. For oh, yourself. Turn the TV off. Can you spend two hours with full attention on the word of God by yourself? Because we watch a movie. Can you binge watch the Bible? Because we binge watch everything else. We have to grow up. My people perish for a lack of knowledge. It's so much in the word, but we're not reading it. We want somebody else to tell us. And people pick and choose what works for them. That's right. And then they pick and choose what God is downloading for them. But he might have something specific. I love God. And I love that he, he has taught me this way. Because uh, most of the things he's taught me, I've never heard. But it's in the book. Yes. A lot of people just teach the two scriptures that they learned as a child. They just pass them same stories on. Yes, God speaks to them. Yes, things are happening. But there's no growth in the people. There's no holiness. There's no spiritual maturity. Arrested development. In its simplest form, we can say it's an immature Spoiled family member who never reaches adulthood. My God. They might be 57, 58, 72, but they haven't reached adulthood. Ooh. My God. They might be great at this point with a ball spot in the middle, but they still haven't reached adulthood. Amen. Grown man can't be satisfied with one woman. They haven't reached adulthood. Grown man, still cussing and arguing people with people, can't sit down and have a rational conversation, not knowing how to talk things out. Conflict resolution. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can disagree. We can go back and forth. I love my mother-in-law. Listen, we, we go back and forth, and it blesses me. She says what she needs to say. I say what I need to say. She says what she needs to say. And then we go on to talk about who's cooking them. <laughs> I love it. You have to have healthy sparring partners. Sometimes they're going to be able to hold their they tongue. And sometimes they're not because God is trying to mature you. Worry about yourself. In every situation, what am I supposed to be learning? Yeah. That's damn cool. I can't work. What am I supposed Come to be on. learning? What am I supposed to be getting from this? Who, Jesus? God, I bless you. To have a childlike desire as an adult is a seed to the pedophile spirit. It's a doorway to the pedophile spirit. To be a grown up with childlike desires. Yeah. Woo! But see, we just talked about how sin is only considered sin in its most extreme forms. When I say pedophile, it's something you need to be like, oh. Yeah. But we're still close. If we're grown ups with childlike desires, trucks, trains, video games. My God. Yeah. Pedophilia is a psychosexual disorder, generally affecting adults characterized by sexual interest in children. Yeah. Those 
those that are easily victimized by pedophilia are those who are neglected, uncovered. They have no hedge of protection around them. My God. My Lord. When we think about any kind of situation that's happened to children, whether it was children of our own age or children that were older or grown-ups, it had to happen when no one was around. It had to happen in the dark. Yes. My Lord. Jesus. No hedge of protection. This happens also spiritually. That's why you can't just be a loner. People see your gift. People see how great you are. My God. And they take advantage of it. And if you don't have nobody in your corner, says, baby, I know he said he like you. But he ain't the one. I know she said she loves you. She ain't the one. My God, you'll get taken advantage of. It's not okay for the grown teacher to be sleeping with the student. Yeah. Woo! It's not normal. It's not normal to be having a girlfriend that's 30 years old younger than you. It's not, that's not normal. To desire a, a husband that's granddaddy age. And you ain't grandma age. It's not, something's off. But it doesn't have to be sexual to be taken advantage of. Happens every day in the natural. Those that have low self-esteem will always be easily taken advantage of. Those that have not been validated will always be easily taken advantage of. That's it. That's it. That's true. My God. Come on. She's 16 dating a 25-year-old. It's not natural. Amen. Help us, God. Yes. Jesus. Help us, Lord. That's right. Ooh, Jesus. And then it's not okay to have all of these different sexual partners. Because some people have picked up a pedophile spirit because you laid with somebody that was a pedophile. Come on. Or you laid with somebody who laid with somebody that was a pedophile. You don't know what people are doing. It is not okay. Your body is the temple of God. Come on, man. It's reserved for holiness. Yes. God is not being mean. He's not being mean. He's telling you to wait until you are married to the spouse that he chose. He's not being mean. You don't know what you'll pick up. Yeah. My God. Be scared. Jesus. To you, somebody. Let me let's let we gotta stay right here. Right there. Because as the Lord was ministering this to me, situation came to mind. I've seen people only have friends with those that are beneath them. And I'm not meaning like just lower. I mean mentally. Because they can manipulate. My God. Where are your friends that are on your spiritual level? Where are your friends that are on your mental level? You can't only want friends. I mean, I'm not talking about your, the ones you're mentoring. I'm talking about the ones you call your, your sparring, your accountability on your age group with your peers. Yes. Yes. You can't just want to be around people that are mentally challenged so that you can manipulate the gifts. That's true. Or who, who, those who are just a little dingy. Just a little, they just don't quite elevate on the They're sweet people. They're kind, but the elevator don't go all the way up to the top. So everything you tell them is gold. Be careful that you're not taking advantage of people. Yes. Working them long hours, giving them a little bit of money. Because they don't know no better. It's a pedophile spirit. 
You're using them. But what you can get, because they're immature yes. mentally. Yeah. Woo, Jesus! Help us now. Yes. Some people have picked up the spirit of being touched as a child. Yes. Taking advantage of or using someone who is younger or vulnerable yeah. or immature emotional for your own personal gain. Young girls who have been just not handled right, but they're cute. And a man come along, say all the right things. Daddy wasn't there. Mama's busy working. Before you know it, we got a situation. Yeah. Our issue today is being older, but handling things with a young man. Somebody give me the time because I got to pick my child up from work. What time is it? Okay. Yeah. Let's go to First Corinthians four. See, all you gotta do is listen to God. I love God. Better, you gotta get a relationship. The Lord said, oh, your child got to get off. For it's real. It is real. God's not gonna let you miss out on anything. Now all you gotta do is stay connected. I don't need no alarm clock. And I'm not bragging on myself. I'm just showing you when you live a life in the spirit, all you have to do is obey. Just obey. Just obey. The other morning, the Lord told me, get up out the bed. I was like, well, I was thinking, I don't want to lay here another 10 minutes. I'm tired. And he said, go on there at your desk. Soon as I got seated at my desk, I got a phone call. Somebody was on the phone crying. Mm. All you have to do is be obedient to the Spirit of God as he leads you. Sometimes it's just an impression. Sometimes it's a thought. Somebody just pop into your mind. That's God. First Corinthians four. Verse fifteen. For even if you had ten thousand others to teach you about Christ, you have only one spiritual father. For even if you have many teachers, which we do, life comes with many teachers. Yeah. All day long, you're going to get taught stuff, whether you want to or not. You walk in the store, you see how somebody's cashier, you learn how they're doing this. You, you're, you're being taught all day long. The way people drive, everything, you're being taught all day long. Another translation said we have many teachers but few fathers. My God. Who are our fathers? What is the difference between a teacher and a father? My God. For even if you had 10,000 others to teach you about Christ, you have only one spiritual father. Let's pause right there for just another second. Because sometimes we got too many spiritual parents. And now we confuse. How many, how many mothers do you have? How many fathers do you have? Amen. You can't have 12 spiritual mothers and fathers. That's why you're confused. Yes. Because this household run like this. Mm -hmm. This household over here run like that. Now you're confused. Mm -hmm. My God. Man. Help us. Yes, For I became your father in Jesus Christ when I preached the good news to you. A spiritual parent is one who enlightens you teaches you in the ways of the Lord, walks you through that thing in the ways of God. Lord, hallelujah. hallelujah. So I urge you to imitate me. Woo, I just think it's so funny. When I watch Michelle a lot, I see myself. Because we walk this thing together. Yeah, yeah. You, you, you will always look like your spiritual parent. You will sound like because you spent so much time in their company, your language becomes Oh, Jesus. Peter was told by one of the little girls that they 
said, you you been with Jesus, ain't you? He was like, I ain't been with Jesus. She said, no, you sound like him. Your speech yeah. betrays him. Ooh, you sound like where you been. We know when you've been around a lot of cousins because the customer has slipped out. Come on. Ooh, my God. Even the babies that are in here. I just saw many people be like, my little child's at home saying, thank you, God, or hallelujah, or whatever, because it's who you're around, you begin to sound yes, like. Yes, Your behavior looks like the people that you are around. If you are only in a crowd with people that cuss folks out when they get cut off in traffic, then when you get older, you cuss folks out when you get caught out, cut off in traffic. Amen. Verse 17. That's why I sent Timothy, my beloved and my faithful child in the Lord. He will remind you of how I follow Jesus Christ. Just as I teach in all the churches everywhere I go, you will look like, you will imitate. You're not going to be the same, but you'll have some traits. You'll have some tendencies of the one who, what I call, birthed you out. We don't have enough fathers, spiritual fathers, spiritual mothers. We don't have enough who are actually spiritual. Because to be a spiritual mother or a spiritual father, what that means is I need to be one who duplicates. The Bible says be fruit-filled. First you get full of the Spirit and then multiply. Yeah. Amen. Don't multiply if you ain't fruit-filled. What's the fruit? Love, joy, peace, patience, gentleness, kindness, self-control. Come on. Don't be multiplying half and some spoiled fruit, little rotten fruit, little too early fruit. Come on. Be careful. Let's go to Hebrews. We're talking about stunted growth. What is the difference between a teacher? The last scripture said, we have many teachers. We're going to keep going to Hebrews 12. We have many teachers but few fathers. Teachers instruct you. You learn lessons. But fathers correct you. Discipline you. My God. They can't be your spiritual father or your spiritual mother if they never check you. I'm not saying punch you or put their hands on you. But if they can't discipline you, you didn't come from them. Because yes. I don't whoop the neighbor's kids, but I whoop my own. Yes. Let's go to Hebrews 12 and 5. And have you forgotten the encouraging words God spoke to you? As his children, he said, my child, don't make light of the Lord's discipline and don't give up when he corrects you. Kids get mad and stop doing whatever they're doing when they get corrected. No. For me, I was offended when people are old me and they don't correct me because you don't love me if you don't correct me. And you don't have time to sugarcoat it. If I, when we're talking to our children, we don't have time to say, you know, Johnny, you know, I really love you and, you know, I, no, Johnny, stop. You're going to hurt yourself. Right. When someone is your spiritual parent, you're giving them the authority to correct you in love. Yeah. It might not even come out the way you want all the time, but the love is that I told you. Come on. Come yeah. on. Yeah. My God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Oh, Jesus. For the Lord disciplines those he loves. Come on. That's it. I love God. Yes, it is. And he punishes each one. Mm -hmm. He accepts as his child. Woo. As you endure this divine discipline, remember yeah. mm -hmm. that God is treating you as his own children. Who ever heard of a child who was never disciplined by their father? Mm -hmm. If God doesn't discipline you as he does all his other children, it means you are illegitimate mm -hmm. and you are not really his children at all. Okay. Oh, Jesus. 
Since we respect our earthly fathers who discipline us, should we submit even more to the discipline of the Father of our spirits and live forever? Yes, thank you, Jesus. For our earthly fathers discipline us for a few years doing the best they know how. But God's discipline. Oh, Jesus. But God's discipline is always Good. Right, right. We gotta remember that. Oh, but Lord, I'm tired of doing that. <laughs> but but you gotta go through this because you, you disobey, but I still love you. I'm still with you. Yes, thank you, God. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. But you still gotta get this punishment. You gotta stay on punishment. My God, my mama was the worst at keeping us on punishment. Listen, we were just going there and say, Mama, can we please? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but honestly in all actuality we have to do the opposite because when we let the children just keep being disobedient and keep backsliding and keep getting in trouble and not bringing it down on them they don't understand true discipline yes. and it can save their life one day Amen. they have to know you mean what you say and you say what you mean yes, I would, hear, I would hear my daddy say, it hurts me more than it hurts you. And I was like, that is not true. <laughs> Until I got older and had to whoop my kids and then go in the other room and cry myself. But you better do it. But you better do it. Bible says, spare the rod means don't correct them and spoil the child. When a child is spoiled, they're no good. And then you wonder why the teacher's calling all the time. Because you wouldn't bring the rod down. Jesus. And then these same children, they grow up. And they become defiant adults, cussing at the police. And then their whole life gets taken. Because they never learn to respect authority. The first set of authority you learn to respect. Mama and daddy. Obey thy mother and thy father. Yes. And thy days shall be longer on the face of the earth. Mm -hmm. That is why we have so many young people dying in the streets. It ain't about black on black crime or white people killing black people. It's not about that. Right. Disobedience right. is taking the lives of these children. Their mama told them don't be out there no way. Mm -hmm. Their daddy told them stop doing that, son. That's it. But they disobeyed sound judgment yeah. my God but God's discipline is always good for us so we might share in his holiness yeah. verse 11 no discipline is enjoyable while it's happening mm -hmm. but it's painful in the middle of that whooping it is not good you don't like it it's painful when it's done right Oh, Jesus. That punishment is painful when it's done right. That's why we have to let it stick out. If you say, tell the child they can't see their game for six months, they can't see it for six months. It got to get painful first. Yes. Remember. Oh, Jesus. It has to be painful. That's why we, we, we struggle. Because we haven't learned how to say, oh, you don't remember the pain of last season because we're too busy getting out of the line. I ain't going to say that because that hurt. Uh -uh, I'm just get out. And then you hurt yourself again. And then you, you spend your whole life running from pain to pain. Just endure your punishment so that you can stop making the same mistakes. Endure the punishment. Thank you, Father. No discipline is enjoyable while it's happening. It's painful, but afterwards. Come on. Woo, Jesus. But afterwards, there will be a peaceful harvest of right living for those who were trained in this way. Come on. There's no peaceful living if you have no training. But those that were trained in the way yes. of the Lord, 
who's stuck in there. I mean, you might have to cry while punishing your child. It does hurt us. You think it don't hurt God's heart to watch us struggle as single mothers because we laid down before marriage? I'm sure it hurts. It hurts my heart. Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. My God, yes. But we, but he's with us in it, and we should learn from our consequences. Okay, I see that can go well. But the last time the Lord told me to stop, and I kept going, let it go. Let me just stop. Right, right, right. Let me just stop. Let me just pull back. If God said it, it's possible. You know how we? I can't stop. If He said it, it's possible. Thank you, Jesus. My God. Going to the doctor over and over for the same thing, and all you got to do is do your part. Come on. That's just the discipline of the Lord. Yeah. He loves you enough. He wants you to have self-control. Yes. Can't stop yeah. sleeping around. Then you wonder why you're in the clinic time after time after time. Now you got something that they even got a prescription cure for. Come on. It's the discipline of the Lord for disobedience. We have to learn that as children. When children learn that consequences have actions, that actions have consequences, right. then we get older and we won't struggle with it so much. But when we let the kids keep having their way, it, it just makes it harder on them. And then when they get older, it's a struggle to obey God because they never obey their earthly parents. Yes. Woo, Jesus, the best lesson. The best thing you can give your child is obedience. Hallelujah. Ooh, yes, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. It's the best thing. And the longer you wait, the harder it is. My True. God. Who Jesus. Verse 12. So take a new grip. All right. Take a new grip with your tired hands and strengthen your weak knees. Make out a straight path for your feet so that those who are weak and lame will not fall but become strong. Endure that season because it's strengthening you. It's so important to get delivered from lust before you get married. Because I just believe, now I don't know about no other body of Christ and church, but I believe up in here, we going places. Yes. We yes. gonna trap. We gonna do some things. And you might have to leave your spouse at home for, for a short time, a week or so, because you gotta go out and do something. And you don't have time to come back to a cheating spouse because they didn't overcome lust. You don't have time to be out of town and you preaching and you working with your job and you can't even keep your mind straight because you didn't get delivered from lust. Yeah. Marriage does not cure lust. You have to be delivered from that. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Stunted growth. Arrested development. My God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. God, we bless your name. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Thank we bless you. your name. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. I Thank you, God. Thank you, Father. I choose my Thank you, Lord. Jesus. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Jesus, you're my God. God. So I will make room for you. I will prepare for two. So
But it takes full faith to own that. Don't hesitate, because you're going to miss your blessing. The Lord showed me this. It's coming quick. Not only is it coming quick, there's going to be doors. that I, I mean, it's going to be the smallest opportunity. Hey, can you come and do this? I need you to come and do this this weekend. Well, I need to wait on confirmation to see. You've been praying six months about a financial breakthrough. What do you mean? All right, all right. My God. All right. The opportunities are going to be short. It's not going to be something you've got a long time to try to figure out if it's right or if it's wrong. By the time you sit up and wait to try to figure it out and search and all this thing, the opportunity is going to be gone. Don't hesitate. Don't hesitate. Don't hesitate in this season. The Lord told me this the other day. He said it's birthday season. Birthday, like birthday gifts. And as I was in the spirit, I began to see birthday gifts, presents, beautifully wrapped presents falling from the sky. Birthday season. My God. Ooh. Ooh, Jesus. My God. My God. Don't hesitate to unwrap your gift. Ooh, you act like a little kid at Christmas. They run down those steps because they know it's theirs. <laughs> they even open up gifts that ain't theirs. <laughs> oh, Jesus. God is faithful. All we have to do is trust God through the process. That does not mean every day is going to be easy. It is okay to have a hard day. They happen. Cry a little bit. But bless God while you're in it. We have to learn how to use our tools. When you in here and we hollering, Jesus, hallelujah, and all those things, don't just do that in here. It works at home. It works at home. It works in your car, works on your job, it works at school. Anywhere you gotta use your weapon of worship. It's a weapon in the grocery store when the bill get too high. Sometimes I just gotta use it to regulate my mind. Bring me back down. I got it. I got it my emotion, so I gotta say, God, I bless you. I trust you, God. I still love you. I still count you as faithful. When you get in your emotions, you're no longer counting God as faithful. It is okay to cry. It's okay to have a moment, but bring it back. Bring it back. The Lord always sends a word of instruction through this place. And then you get tested on it the next week or so. So, when you're having a hard day, go back. Go on YouTube. Go on Facebook. Go back. Listen again. I do it several times a, a, during the week, and I'm like, oh, the Lord did say that. Bless God. Oh, now I, yeah, that's yeah. true. Yeah. The word is a weapon. You don't have to be caught off guard by the situations. The Lord is warning us. He reveals it. The Bible says no thing will he do in the earth without revealing it to his prophets. He gives us eyes to see and ears to hear. But you have to be willing to trust the word. We're so easy to trust the easy word. Oh, the Lord said, he said, go give me a million dollars. Bless God, I trust him. But the Lord said, no, you got to leave him though. Well, now I need confirmation because I don't know if that was God. Though. I, don't, I don't know if that was God because... We can't do that. When the Lord has shown you a person, a prophet, who is credible, and it keeps coming to pass, when they tell you something you don't really necessarily like, but you know everything else has lined up, you gotta believe the report of the Lord through the prophet's mouth. It's not God being mean and it's not personal. That's why Jesus could only do a few miracles in his own hometown. They count them as common. Yeah. Oh, that's just. That's just Jesus. Ain't that Joseph's boy, the carpenter? He ain't nothing but from Nazareth. The Bible said a prophet is without honor in his own hometown. Because they're counted as common. Because they grew up with you, because they knew you. They know what you used to be. Don't worry about what I used to be. Who am I today? My God. God is faithful. It's 
Hispanic growth. That was our message today. And I believe the Lord revealed some areas, highlighted some areas that we have to work on as children of God. And then I believe he went in in the spirit. He began to do surgery on our hearts and on our minds. And I believe even as we sleep tonight, the Lord's going to download dreams, visions, impressions. He'll give you a thought of instruction. But you have to be obedient and don't hesitate. For that is the word of the Lord. I was sitting there, I was like, wow, you know, mm. from beginning all the way to the end, even when I had to run back in here, I was like, I can't miss this. I'm going to listen to it again, uh, because that was part of it. I know I missed, I know I needed to hear. But um, I was asking the Lord, so exactly what do you want me to say as I close? And as I was listening, the Lord just informed me of, give your testimony if you're falling. So... We call ourselves adults. But yet, as adults, what are we leaving behind? My dad was one of the most popular men you would know in land. They always called him Blowfish. Eugene, his dad was called Killer. That's Killer son, right? My dad was a sharpshooter in poop. I mean, deadly. He'll take you out with one hand. He don't even know you used to. Just boom, easy. Boom, boom, boom. Take your money like it's nothing. My dad, as he got older, his pride was always with him. So he always had to make sure his looks was well put. So, as even though he wasn't a great father that I desired, he was still there in my early years. But when he got older, age caught up with him. He started getting kidney stones. And I never seen my dad cry, but I walked into the bathroom and I was I'm walking to his room, and the room that was open, and I just saw him holding on to the sink because he tried to pass the stone and he started crying. Mm. It was funny to see such a strong man cry over just trying to just trying to pee, you know, trying to urinate. So I was, you know, I mean, like, praise the Lord, he'll come and come back on me with that, because I know how much she don't hurt. But <laughs> and, um, but then, he started losing his teeth. Ooh, and my dad was famous for his smile. They said, that's the smile of just, it'll brighten you up as soon as he see. And then, he would have the biggest hugs. I mean, hugs that just make you feel like, I don't care what's going on in life, everything is going to be all right. Just give you those type of hugs. Like, my God. So, when he got to his last days, and I read, and the Lord's telling me, if you guys don't know the story of Jacob and Esau, I'm read about the birthright. That when their father was getting ready to die, he had to give a blessing to the oldest son. But that's something you earned to give a birthright, to give a blessing to your children. Now, when my mentor was passing away, he didn't die. He said, I'm not going to die until Terrence comes here. So it took me two weeks to get to him, but I got to him, and he gave me my blessing. And I left, and he passed away a couple of days later. But my dad, now he had false teeth in his mouth. He, he smiled at something big, you know, oh, my gosh, I'm, I'm this person, and he's back. I mean, he literally doesn't want to go see his mom because he didn't have teeth in him. This is how, you know, if you keep your looks always in front of you, type of thing. It's always going to give you that, that absent sense of mentality. So, on his deathbed, I'm looking at him and they took his dentures out of his mouth. So, his, his whole mouth was sucked in, you know. His eyes was all dark around the edges, you know. And the thing is, I used to always joke with my dad, you know. So I wanted to say, you sure is ugly, you know, but <laughs> you know, he wouldn't be able to smile because he had a tube going down his throat. So I 
kept that joke to myself. And now I looked at him, I realized you put all these years building up your image. Mm. Yet it cost you everything. That's good. My God. That's good. That's good. Building up your image. Woo. And look at you now. Now, mind you, this is not a fault to my father because I loved him in his last three years. He was my best friend. But look at you now. Yeah. Then, as I sat there, because I, I, I prophesied early, I was around 19. And I said, Watch, I be the only one by your bedside holding your hand when you die. Yet you counted me as nothing. But watch, I be there. And that's exactly what happened. I sat right by his bedside, holding his hand. And as he took his last breath, gone, boom, okay, I'm still holding his hand. But something was missing. He didn't leave me with nothing. Something was missing. So when he died, now mind you, funerals happening, the wake, that's what you just do it. You see the body? And he looked real good. They stuffed his cheeks with whatever they stuffed him with. And he looked real, real good. My like, God, what are you looking at? Look at you, you know? And I, and I kind of resemble my dad a lot. But as I looked at him, something was missing. So a week and a half later after the, after the funeral, and I'm headed back up here to Louisville because we buried him in Miami. And um, I thought about it. So I called my stepmom. I said, did my dad leave any inheritance to his children? And she said, let me look up, let me look up by and I'll call you back in a couple of days. I said, yes, please. Because I know as a father, he's supposed to leave us with something. My God. Something. Yeah. So... Days go by, and then I get this phone call, and she says to me, your dad left you guys with nothing. Oh, How could that be? This man invested so much into himself, yet in your last days, all you invest into yourself is your death? Mm. What do you have to leave behind in your genealogy, in your generations to come? Now, this is a man's conference. So I'm, I'm going to speak on behalf of a man. How could you call yourself a man when your main purpose is not your children? When your main purpose is not the ones you Lord. To be honest, you're a coward. Yeah. Because all you want to fixate on how many women like you, how many women are you sleeping with, how much money do you have? Certain outlooks that make you think that you are better than any man because you may fight well. My Lord. Because you got a lot of clout on the street, but yet when you die, Come on. you leave nothing behind except for absent memories. Now I'm gonna let you know this too. As a man, do you honestly think that you will be remembered? My kids, when he died, was 9 and 12. And they only saw my father twice. Jesus. And the only reason they cried was because they knew that I would miss him. But they said, Daddy, we don't even remember him. Jesus. These are your genealogy, yes. Lord. They don't even remember you. That means that when I die and my youngest brother died, you forgot. Yeah. What type of man lives in this direction? My Lord. That all you have to give back is absent memories. That in two generations you will no longer be remembered. Wow. My God. That's good. Amen. All eyes closed, all heads bowed. Dear most heavenly, most gracious Father, glory to your name as we prepare to 
just into your graces once again. Father, we want to thank you so much for this beautiful word that you have blessed, my Lord. We have felt you throughout every single moment, every single rhythm. Your texture is so perfect, Father. It's beautiful. Thank you so much for just being here with us in the midst of everything that was going on. Lord Jesus, we want to thank you so much for your love. More than anything else, your favor and your grace over our lives. Lord, we could be anywhere, but we decided to be right here worshiping you, Lord. Thank you so much for just honoring that fact. Lord Jesus, we want to get ready to get out of here. So as we once again leave, we ask that you may be with us and give us safe travel and mercy. Deliver us once again, Father. Allow this word to not leave our heads or our hearts as we get out of here. Remove all demons from out the door so they cannot steal anything that has been embellishing to us this day. Continue to feed us as we come back tomorrow. Glory to your name, Lord Jesus, as we give you the honor and the glory. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. 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 So we'll meet back here at 7 p.m. tomorrow night to continue on with our men time. We will not have leadership tomorrow. No leadership tomorrow. Tomorrow is canceled. Our leadership meeting for tomorrow is canceled. And then we'll meet here at 10 a.m. on Sunday for um, our wrap-up. Listen, y'all do not want to miss Sunday. Make sure you bring somebody with you. Um, and tomorrow is going to be amazing too. I believe that is all the announcements. I will leave our bucket out if you want to sow into the ministry, if you want to sow into this word tonight. Um, all right, I love you all. Blessings and peace. Church is dismissed. Amen. 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 Amen.